This is the Norton Museum of Art at the 27th Annual African, African American, and Caribbean Studies Virtual Summer Institute. From Process to Purpose, featuring a program that was developed by teens, for teens, and engaged over 100 young people throughout Palm Beach County. First, let's take a moment to reflect on the following statement. The Norton Museum of Art is committed to greater inclusion, diversity, equity, and access in every facet of our mission and our internal culture. Welcome. Hola. So I am Yamari Rivera, Director of Family and Community Programs at the Norton Museum of Art. A little bit about me. I've been with the Norton for over eight years and I oversee family, teen and community partnerships, specifically serving out of school time audiences. I am passionate about elevating young people's voices and creating flourishing, sustainable partnerships with communities. So let's get into it from process to purpose. Let's explore the unique trajectory for these young people to create one dynamic program. The young people you see before you is the Norton's Teen Advisory Squad, Meet TASK. TASK is made up of 15 dynamic teens from a variety of schools throughout Palm Beach County. They're selected from an interview process, and once selected, they provide, are provided the opportunity to turn their creative ideas into action by collaborating with museum staff and artists and designing innovative programs for all teens to enjoy. This group met during the pandemic. We met from January to April every Friday via Zoom. In our sessions, members engaged in intimate conversations and thoughtful discussions about culture and art and definitely youth culture and these unique times. Their task or purpose was to design a teen program that highlighted our past exhibition, Art Finds a Way. This exhibition was put together by the Director of Curatorial Affairs, Cheryl Bruvant. The exhibition in part presented art by black artists, most of which was created before the pandemic, revealing racism, violence against black bodies and legalized discrimination practices in America. These artists using personal stories, our country's history, as well as pop culture and fictional narratives, asked us, the viewer, to consider reality through their artwork. A quote from the exhibition, art finds a way to make us think, feel, and act. So their purpose would be to design a program about a powerful exhibition in these unique times. I looked within as an educator and questioned so many things. I asked myself, how would I know? How could I teach the context of this exhibition within three months how could I give my students a deeper understanding of American history and of racism? I knew this would have to be a process. And so the plan was to get teens to spend some time getting to know historical fact, historical fact within America. And I looked to Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi's book, Stamped, Racism 
anti-racism, and you. The idea was teens would read and review this book. We would do this as a group collectively and discuss our ideas and reflect on each chapter. As we read, we would also explore works of art by artists of color to create a deeper understanding of the American experience. And then we would reflect collectively, synthesize our learning to create a teen program that would engage youth from all walks of life. So the works that they looked at were works by Betty Sars, Least We Forget the Strength of Our Tears, The Fragility of Smiles, and The Fierceness of Love. And if you look closely detailed below, it says, of those who toiled, of strangers lost at sea, extreme times call for extreme heroines. We looked at this work, we looked at works by also Gordon Parks, a segregated drinking fountain from Mobile, Alabama, as part of his Time Magazine series documenting the segregated South. And we did all of these readings and reflections using three strategic techniques. We used Project Zero tools. These tools are a series of thinking routines or one would say set of questions in a brief sequence of steps that scaffold and support students thinking. We really wanted them to dive deep into the book and their understanding, dive deep into the works, and then explore different possibilities, explore different narratives, um, different shapes of the world. So one of the thinking techniques that we use for reflecting and reviewing works of art was see, think, wonder. This thinking routine teaches meticulous observation and thoughtful interpretation. Um, it helps also stimulate curiosity and set the stage for inquiry. You see a specific work, what do you see? What is happening in the scene? What catches your eye? What is displayed? What is the artist trying to show? And then what do we think about it now that we are receiving this information? How do we distill this information with our own understanding? And what are our curiosities about that work of art? What is complex? What is challenging? As we read Stamped, we used Connect, Extend, Challenge as a thinking routine to help us really understand the book and understand the historical context of the book and apply that knowledge to students' everyday life, their walks of life, their lens and view of the world as young people, as female, as male, um, as people of color. And as white people within our society, as Latinas. Um, with this thinking uh, routine, Connect, Extend, Challenge, it helps students make connections between new ideas and also prior knowledge. As I mentioned, knowledge that they've acquired through their lens of living life. Um, also knowledge that they have acquired in school. It helps students make connections between new ideas um, and the possibilities of antiquated ideas. This routine also encouraged teens to acquire a list of ongoing questions, things they were puzzled about within the book, things that they found challenging and difficult as they reflected on what they were learning. Using this um, routine, connect, extend, challenge, we were able to dissect and explore um, our constitution and its amendments 
and its amendments, we were able to explore the complexities of um, anti-racist teaching versus um, assimilation. Um, we were able to explore even the 10-point program from the Black Panther Party um, and have deep, meaningful dialogue on whether those 10 points were relevant in today's society. We had an engaging conversation about activism and social media. Are you still an activist if you post a conscious post? Um, or are you only an activist when you're marching and protesting? We compared today's uh, society and young people today to the young people of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee as part of the civil rights movement. All of these conversations were facilitated using these tools. Additionally, we used a tool about perspective taking and exploring diverse viewpoints um, called Step Inside. The way it works, it's just three simple questions. What can the person or thing perceive? What might the person or thing know about or believe? What might the person or thing care about? Applying this to works of art or even the literature that we were reading. Um, you can find these resources by going to um, Harvard Project Zero's webpage. It's pz.harvard.edu. Um, go to their resource dropdown and go to Thinking Routine Toolbox, and you can find um, wonderful thinking routines and step by step ways to use them. So, once we synthesized our learning, we have gotten through midway through the process close to the end, it was time to brainstorm and it was time for the teens to develop their program. After a dynamic brainstorming session, the two students took some time to reflect on each work of art within the, the exhibition. And they selected five works that they found meaningful to share with other teens. And the program they designed would be a teen writing challenge. They named it Words That Soar. Here are the winners for Words That Soar within this video. I will show, shortly show it to you. Um, the program had a huge success. We thought we would be engaging anywhere from, um, you know, 20 to possibly 50 would be a great success of engaging young people in this program. Um, we encourage them via social media, email blasts, and also emailing teachers to participate and really promote this program to their students, um, the Teen Writing Challenge. It was to share their honest responses and reflection to five selected works by the Teen Advisory Squad. They could write anything from a rap to a play, to a rant, to a personal account, to poetry, um, and submit it to us by May 14th, and we would select five winners to be featured in a video. The winners would also receive a special gift from the Norton gift shop, and all that participated would receive free admission tickets to the museum. We had over 100 young people apply and submit responses an outstanding number of 400, over 450 responses, which um, our team of educators had to read through, but it was an absolute joy to see young people looking carefully at works of art, distilling it and reading through those responses. Um, it was a real treat, it creates hope, and that's what I do. That's why I do what I do. Um, so here are the winners for the Teen Writing Challenge. Hi, my name is Krista Brochu, and I'm part of Norton's Teen Advisory Squad, TASC. 
The Norton's Art Finds a Way exhibition presents artwork by black artists, where each work tells a different story about their experiences, stories that are important to listen to in order to understand their firsthand experience as black people. Art can be a way for a community to come together and show solidarity and support, evoke emotion in an audience, communicate a message, and educate about important issues. My name is Maya Lopez, and I'm also part of TASK. As you can see, just as art finds a way, your words have also found a way. The Norton Teen Advisory Squad, TASK, sought to cast light on teenagers' honest and fearless opinions with a writing challenge. Teens were encouraged to submit their reflections on five works from the Norton Special Exhibition, Art Finds a Way. Here are the winners. Hi, my name is Shania Grant. I go to FAU High School and I am in ninth grade. I will be reciting my poem, Sweet Day, Bitter Drink, inspired by the Gordon Parks. A typical southern scene, the deadly heat and the children so serene. Taste of ice cream, sweet, like Nana's famous iced tea. Taste of ice cream, cold, like the hearts of those who watch. Watch the bitter injustice poison the spring. Injustice affecting families, destroying sweet children enjoying their youth and their parents who know the bitter truth. Yet they smile, giggle, and laugh. The parents, while the water begins to seep, hold back their bitter weep, smiles that they have to keep. Preserving their children's innocence, they wish they still had. Still, black bodies smiling through the pain here is a saddening southern scene. Hi, my name is Shamari Baldwin. I'm also with the Norton Task, and today I'll be reciting a piece from Emma Troust, inspired by Faith Ringgold, from the French Collection Part 2, Number 12, Moroccan Holiday. History. Woven into the fabric of space and time, into the skin and quilts passed down from mother to daughter. The colors of paint and people tell a story of triumph over centuries of tyranny. Faces of men and women who changed the world yesterday and made today possible, interwoven with the stories of tomorrow. Patches and pieces of cloth stitched together to make a quilt like people standing together to make history. My name is Krista and I will be reciting a piece by Clara Sullivan, who is a senior at A.W. Dreyfus School of the Arts. This work is inspired by Kara Walker's piece, A Warm Summer Evening in 1863. She looks like the dancer in the top of a jewelry box, the one that opens and spins ever so gracefully as the light music plays the one that seems so in touch with the music that her heart must beat in time with the music. Sometimes the music turns wonky, the sound begins to warble, and the beautiful notes begin to go sharp and flat, creating an uncomfortable dissonance. She looks like the dancer at her turn begins to slow as the box unwinds. Her movements begin to look like they take much more effort, yet she remains graceful. She, however, is not dancing. Her heart does not beat to the sound of the peaceful music. She does not twirl in a pirouette. She does not get to be the dancer. Hey, I'm Derfus Paul. I am a student at Atlantic High School in ninth grade. Today, I'll be reciting my poem, Standing There Face to Face, inspired by Robert Pruitt, New Kids in the Hood. Standing there face to face, what separates us but our race? But is it a disgrace to embrace our race? No, so I stood there quietly in place. As my heart paced at the thought of the difference of our face. Have I made a mistake or am I displaced? No, I'm right where I'm supposed to be, without a word or a plea. With my hair, I show you my power, with my skin growing brighter every hour. To show you what my ancestors fought for, not because they were weak, but because they knew at their core that they were worth more. So I aim to reach higher, even through the fire, no matter what it requires, I know I was made to reach higher. Higher and higher till the skies fall down. 
till the jewels on top of the crown are only enough to show you the glory without the gown. Lovely, lovely, lovely indeed is my skin. I don't arbor you nor adore you. I just know we are different, different but human, human and pure, pure and allure, standing there face to face. Our race is a story to face, an astonishing and marvelous story to face. But there's two sides to every story. I really wish that I knew yours without any lies. But at this very moment, one thing now I know for sure is that I know mine. Hi, my name is Lily, and I am a student at Alexander W. Dreyfus School of the Arts in my 11th grade year. I will be reciting a piece inspired by Super Blue Omo. I see her, and I am reminded of my sister. My sister who came to this country with song in her heart. She grew up picking mangoes from the trees of Curacao, and now the earth has told her to nourish the world as it has nourished her. She came to this country with the stories of the women who raised her, and now she plans to let the world know. She met me and I could see the beautiful collage of a woman that she was. It was in the languages she spoke, in the comfort she showed me, in the love that she shared so generously. We shared different blood and different stories, yet we grew together enough that our stories coincided. She is every bit my sister as I am hers and it was because of her determination that I am able to nourish others. I hope you enjoyed their creative writing that was so telling and touching. And also it was a great success to work with these talented young people um, our 15 task members that thoughtfully and carefully trusted um, the Norton, myself, to go through this process of engaging with the exhibition Art Finds a Way, reflecting on and reviewing the book Stamped, um, and developing this fantastic program. Um, for more information, you can contact me um, at riveray at norton.org. And again, as part in theme with uh, this year's conference um, in our institute, the marathon continues. Kudos to you educators. Enjoy your summer. <laughs>